नमस्ते आचार्य जी आई एम नंदिनी बजाज आई एम अ सेकेंड ईयर अंडर ग्रेजुएट विद डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जियोलॉजी एंड जियो फिजिक्स एट आई खड़गपुर एंड माई क्वेश्चन इज एट माई लाइक यू मैंशन अबाउट वेदांता एट माई एज शुड आई स्टार्ट रीडिंग अबाउट इट Uh, you 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 haven't yet started no sir oh it's too late <laughs> okay <laughs> sir late. how like what do you mean by how how did you no 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 not how like my question is how i'll be like i was not very sure whether i'll be able to digest it or not how did you decide on that even without trying nandini please which all scriptures have you laid your hands on so almost none like and having tried on none you concluded that it's too early for you to start or that it's too difficult for you to start uh sir like uh, like in my family my parents they taught me about uh, bhagavad gita and all but then i like at initially i used to find it irrelevant and in past 6 month you can say i was like okay i should once try it but i was not ready okay this is the time i should start reading it maybe you know if there is a compulsory 20 credit course on the upanishads you will not only read the upanishads but even try to secure an a right the moment you know it carries 20 credits you will forget all your hesitation that's how we are you know if it gives me placement and money and cgpa i will read poor bhagavad gita it's not there in the curricula the placements are not linked to it no employer asks you have you read sankhya yoga what is the difference between nishkam karma and vairagya nobody asks you these things why don't they ask these things because they themselves don't know a thing they themselves are in deep delusion so they do not know what to really look for in a candidate and they also know that if there is a candidate who actually knows the answers to the right questions then that candidate will never appear for their interview let alone join their company so that's the ecosystem you are in why do you want to become another victim of that ecosystem your ecosystem is never going to drive you to the gita or upanishads or anything of any worth isn't it upon you now as a mature adult to see that life is not just about the the stuff that your uh, courses contain I have all the respect for what is taught in our institutions but i have greater respect for life and liberation from it technology and profession are a very small part of who you are life is a much much bigger affair life is not about dealing with machines life is first of all dealing with yourself and realizing that there is a deep need within waiting to be addressed resnik holiday or erodo were not going to address that need are you getting it uh, sir but uh, sometimes i feel like uh, even if i am reading a shlok or something sometimes like there is this feel that maybe i'll not be able to apply that at a greater extent because of lack of my vision or maturity where where do you think you can apply fourier series where all have you already applied laplace transformation please tell me please please 90% of the things i read at iit i could never apply anywhere i still read them but when it comes to the gita you say oh i do not know where to apply them therefore i am not reading those things where in your life have you already applied even complex numbers please tell me square root of minus 1 what have you done so far with it but you know all about complex numbers right 
in the first year there would have been an entire course on complex numbers and you went through it and probably secured an A or A neg and wow well done. Then you do not ask, but is it going to be of any practical use and you do not ask. I am not uh, insinuating that the stuff we are taught at IIT is not of practical use, obviously it is, obviously everything has its use, obviously without, without the Fourier transformation this, this laptop cannot exist. My question is not whether those things are useful, my question is the question that you ask with respect to the Gita, why do you never ask it with respect to the other things that are taught to you? How many students ask this question to their professors, sir this that you are teaching to me right now, will it ever be useful in my, in my, uh, in my real life, in my professional life, computer science graduates are taught uh, basic science courses in chemistry, are they not? How is it there? First year do not you have a chemistry course even for comm science graduates? No, no, why do not the comm science graduates ask? Sir, what will you do with chemistry? I am not saying they will have nothing to do with chemistry or that that knowledge would not be useful, it would be useful, but you never ask. You take it on trust that if this is being given to me to study, it surely must be having some use somewhere. But when it comes to spirituality, there is a great distrust and that great distrust has been implanted in you by your ecosystem, by the media, by the education, by everything that comes to our mind and affects it. They tell you if you read mathematics, it will give you happiness by giving you some success money. If you read economics, it will be of some use to you. Even if you read current affairs, you will gain in knowledge. Even if you read erotica, you will at least gain some pleasure. But Bhagavad Gita and Upanishads, they give you nothing, neither success nor pleasure. So, who wants to read them? We might worship them, but we do not want to read them. At least try and when you will try, you will find that they are not giving you knowledge, they are addressing the very person you are. They are addressing everything that you relate yourself to, your name, your desires, your feelings, your choices your livelihood, your relationships, your family, your very existence. Now, your very existence obviously is much more important than the technologies you know of, no? What is of more importance to you? The fact that you, yeah, the fact that you exist or the fact that you have knowledge about a certain technology. Gita. Vedan and all, all texts of wisdom address who you are. We do not know who we are, our very existence is hazy. One thing is certain, you are not what you think you are. Hmm? You are not what you operate as, you are not what you are so confident about. Therefore, all of us are very dangerously placed. We do not know who we are, yet we continue to operate as if we know. It is an extremely precarious position. If you do not know where you are standing, if you do not know a thing about what is going on, do you want to choose, decide and move ahead? makes no sense, right? Before you do anything, before you think anything, before you allow yourself to feel anything, must you not know something about yourself? But that is the vacuum we operate in, without knowing the very facts of our existence. We continue to live, eat, walk, choose, decide that too confidently. What does all that result in? Just 
total wastage of this of this precious life. Uh, so then it means like what I feel is key. Our self image is greatly influenced by what others think who we are, what this ecosystem thinks. Exactly. What others think who you are and what your body wants you to believe in. Hmm? Others will tell you, you are a smart girl. And I will start believing it if more and more people will hmm. start telling it. Your body tells you, you are a girl. Both of these are not necessarily true. By that I do not mean that you are not smart or that you are a boy. Others tell you things about yourself. The body gives you in a very deceitful way your basic identity as a body. And we continue to trust these two cheaters and operate as per the education, the advice received from them. Hmm? That is like writing an examination in somebody else's name. If you write your examination as Rekha, what will you get? So, if you live your life as your body, what will you get? You went to write the J, right? You wrote it in somebody else's name. What do you get? Nothing. Ah, that is how we all live. We live as the body. The body might be getting some pleasure or something. I do not know what it gets. Ultimately, it turns to ashes. But for sure, you do not get anything. Sir, by that, do you mean our soul do not get anything out of it? Mm, you are not your soul. <laughs> you are not your body. Then who we are? Go to the Gita. It is already too late, I said. <laughs> if you are talking to me, one of the options is to is to go to my website put in your name we have initiated a program to send the upanishads to whosoever enrolls with us hmm? within a month or two you will receive a copy of the sarasar upanishad it might answer some of your questions hmm? it's a free copy so you may just go there and enter your details and you will receive it and if you do not want to wait for uh, a few months, then you may enroll in some of the Gita courses uh, that we have that might help. Or you may decide to just begin with your own copy of the Gita. Whatsoever you decide, just begin. Thank you so much, Acharya Ji.